You know, I try my absolute best to be someone that unifies the East and the West. You know, alternative Chinese medicine and conventional medicine that sometimes people will call Western medicine, but there is no Western medicine because it's all over the world now, including the dominant form of medicine in China. But in this video, I thought I would take the time to discuss a very, very important thing that I see in medical care, both really, you can be a bad low level doctor in alternative medicine or Chinese medicine, and you can be a great doctor in conventional care. But something that I have a lot of beef with that I thought I would talk about today in this video. Hey, it's Dr. Alex Hine, doctor of Chinese medicine, author of the health book, Master of the Day on Amazon. Now, before we jump in, there's two very important links right below this video. The first is if you'd like to become a local patient of mine or online virtually via telemedicine, the links to my private practice and contact info are right below this video. The next thing is if you'd like to download my free guide, four daily rituals that can potentially help you add years to your life with Chinese medicine, it's right below this video and you'll also get my weekly video newsletter. Let's talk about this idea of the low level physician versus the high level physician. This idea of what the bad doctor is versus the good doctor is comes from one of our ancient medical texts, several thousand years old, probably about between the year 200 and 400 AD. Now in this text, it gives benchmarks for what percentage of your patients should get better if you are the low level physician versus the high level physician, which is nine out of 10 of your patients getting better or are cured. Okay. Now there's an extension of this principle that we often talk about within our field of what the great doctors do versus what the bad doctors do. And even within my own field, the doctors within my field can still practice in a way that is an inexperienced or a symptom based or a very low level of critical thinking doctor. You know, everyone comes in for insomnia. You have 50 insomnia patients. You give them all the same two formulas. There's no differentiation, no customization. This is a low level doctor. They're not going to really get that good results. And when they get more complex cases, they won't know what to do. Now, in the same way, a low level doctor can be one who only treats symptoms. You can be an alternative doctor that only treats symptoms. There's a whole term for it that we have internally called green medicine. Green medicine is when you become an alternative doctor and all you are doing is giving supplements to treat the exact same symptoms and not treating any kind of underlying cause or restoring physiology to the organism. There are a lot of alternative medicine practitioners that are just practicing green medicine. Very expensive supplements, doesn't really get down to the root cause, there is not progression over time, etc. But in this context, I wanted to point out one thing because I have plenty of beef with alternative medicine. It, it will go on for hours, my lecture, my rant. But one thing I see commonly that is very destructive in conventional care is the way antibiotics and antidepressants are prescribed. So let's talk about antibiotics for a second. The most common conditions that I see patients coming in for where they are chronically prescribed antibiotics are often following the Lyme disease infections or suspected Lyme, uh, repeated strep infections, earaches, sinus infections, UTIs. Now, there is nothing inherently wrong with antibiotics. They are one of the best medical interventions in all of human history that have saved the most lives in the last 150 years. Now, the problem is when they are used the way the low-level physician uses an antibiotic, which is very, 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 very common in conventional medical care, where the woman who gets a UTI every other month gets antibiotics. The person who has chronic strep infections gets antibiotics over and over and over back to back. Where the person, I had a patient when I was in school, Lyme disease, this woman had 60, 6, 0 rounds of antibiotics back to back until she had so many health problems, primarily the destruction of her microbiome and the severe diarrhea she was having all day, every day, that she's just stopped seeing her physicians. Now, earaches in children is another one, chronic sinus infections. There's nothing wrong with giving an antibiotic acutely for a short period of time to clear an infection, which is the purpose of it. But giving them chronically, back to back, every time this begins presenting itself, is the quickest way to damage the zheng qi in Chinese medicine. Your innate, let's just call it resistance, immunity, your health, your vitality, I'm not really sure how to translate it. It is one of the quickest ways to predispose yourself to more serious disease and recurrence of the exact same symptom more frequently 
more severely down the line. Nothing wrong with antibiotics. They're life-saving when used properly. The problem is using them for chronic illness repeatedly over time. Now, a piece of this is because conventional medicine often has nothing else to offer, and that is the standard of care. You have to keep offering that because that is what your license says you need to be offering. But let's talk about this a little more. The big problem with this is the way that it damages the Zheng Qi of the person's body. The Zheng Qi, I'm just going to very loosely translate to immune strength or vitality. A very fluffy word, but let's just say one thing that we see in my field that is almost unanimous agreement, at least from the main doctors I learned from, that if you give a kid who keeps getting upper respiratory infections, um, ear aches, ear infections, you give them antibiotics over and over and over again. The next time they get that same infection, they will then be showing a deeper level pathology where now it's going into their chest, they're getting one of those barking coughs. This is almost unanimously agreed upon by the main doctors I learned from. The correlation between the frequency of antibiotics and the greater depth of pathology and often chronicity really, they really often predisposes people to more chronic problems. And the reason in Chinese medicine is that it damages the Zheng Qi. So let's just say you're getting a sinus infection, right? Or you're having a strep infection, whatever it may be. Sinus infection, that means your body's soldiers, your, so your watch guards on the wall have dropped to a certain level where now that illness, you've been infected with something and now it expresses symptoms. And then six months later, oh man, something causes that decrease in strength of your resources. And now you're getting it again. The problem is that you were getting that in the first place. You are predisposed to getting that chronically because your resources, instead of being here, are here. So your inner resources are here. You take antibiotics and it just demolishes them. So now your resources are here. Now you get your other strep infection, your other UTI, your other ear infection, whatever it is. Now your resources are not a 6 out of 10. Now they're a 4.5 out of 10. And then you get another antibiotic, another antibiotic. And then you're wondering, why is it that I keep getting this thing over and over and over again? Because the vitality, the yang, the zheng qi has been depleted to the point where it is not able to adequately kick this out for good. And one of the main problems is that if we are already in a quote unquote immunocompromised state or our resources are running low and we are already predisposed to getting that chronically, and now you throw in an intervention that we know from our perspective, my field, only exacerbates the underlying deficiency. You can see the problem here about where that sends a person a year from now or five or 10 years from now. So something very, very important to keep in mind I don't see a lot of people in conventional care discussing this. In our field, it's it's obvious, right? But whenever I share this with my patients, it's very enlightening and it makes so much sense. And so I thought I would share that with you today because it's very, very important to know, especially if you don't want to be sick anymore. So stepping off my soapbox for the day today, that's all I've got. Again, check out the links right below this video. If you'd like to join my free weekly video newsletter and the free download there for you, or to become a patient of mine locally or online via telemedicine, all the links are right below this video to contact me. And then before you go, I have two related videos for you right here.